Steve and meet again, back with another Bullseye Guy podcast. What are we going to talk about today? Fake news. Actually, we're going to talk about central bank digital currencies, CBDC. But I'm going to start with calling them fake news. And what do I mean by that? Especially U.S. politics. You know, there's a lot of things floating out there about Trump and fake news. We're not going politics. My definition of fake news is different. It's not that fake news is a lie. Fake news is like magic, meaning it's meant to deceive you. Hey, look over here while I pull a rabbit out of the hat. Don't look over here while we're putting this in your coat, coat pocket. That's what I mean by fake news. I don't mean it's a lie. I mean, it's fake like magic is fake. It's meant to deceive you. Where do we start with that? Well, let's just start with the name to begin with. For, for those of you that know, let's back up a little more before we even go to the name. Blockchain, digital, cryptocurrency, central digital, stable coins. There's all of these different names, all of these different notes. And, and you guys have seen my podcast before. If not, it's it's one that talks about the wheel of money, right? You put $1,000 in your bank account. It's a debit card. It's digital money. You go, oh, Bitcoin's digital money. So is your debit card. It's digital, not carrying around cash. But that money has a purpose. You buy a cup of coffee with a, a debit card, put $100 million in a bank account, use that to buy a coffee company using Swift, Fedwire, ACH. Still same money, different purpose. Put $100 into your Starbucks gift card. That's digital money, closed loop, meaning you can only use it inside of Starbucks and it's a mobile app. Just like digital, you got a mobile app on your phone. It's a wallet. As you move around the wheel of money, all of these things function differently, just like banks. Banks have a function. They do a lot of things. One of the primary functions of the bank is to store your money. Another function of the bank is to give you your money. Another function of the bank is to move and transfer money. Do you know what is not a function of the bank? To issue currency. I'm going to pause there. That's a long plan pause for dramatic effect. Do banks issue currency? No. Governments issue currency. So what's the first part of the fake news? What is the government trying to do? They're trying to fool and deceive us with central bank digital currency. There is nothing central or bank or digital about a currency because banks don't issue currency. Governments do. And governments are all about tracking and control. So I'm going to go through CBDCs and what they are and how they work and why we should all be scared to death of them. But the first part of fake news is they're not bank currencies. Banks don't issue a currency. So the government already isn't saying, hey, this is a central government currency because they know that would freak you out. So let's just pull a rabbit out of the hat. Don't look over here while we're doing something over here. CBDCs are not bank currencies. Banks don't issue currency. Where am I going with that? Well, if you look at what a central bank digital currency can do, this is where it starts to get really kind of interesting, a little bit of concern. And if you remember, I went around the wheel of money, right? You put $1,000 in the bank account, you get a debit card, you can spend your money wherever you want, anywhere a debit card's accepted. You can actually keep your money out of the bank and you've got cash in your pocket and you can pay people and you can pay merchants. All of that's there because money is flexible and fungible, meaning you can carry it around. It has different purposes. Here's the second part of the fake news of what the government is doing. And again, this isn't conspiracy theory. Anybody that's watching may not be in, paying attention, but we are the frog in the boiling water and it's up past medium. We're three quarters of the way there. And I'm going to show you here at the end of the podcast, the three steps the government could do to completely eliminate currency. You won't have a say about it. We're already 70% there. Europe's about 80% there, 90. And when I walk you through it, we should all be scared and put up. But let's let's back up again. Central digital bank currencies, how are they issued? What do they do? Well, the federal government right now is issuing a new program called Fed Now. Now watch how this works. I'm gonna show you fake news and trick. If I ask any of you, hey, do you wanna get your money faster? Do you wanna get your money quicker? Do you want to get access to your money? Do you want your money protected? Do you want your money insured? As a business, do you want your money in your pocket quicker? Do you want your money with less fees? Of course, the answer to all of that would invariably probably be, yeah, sure. I want my money faster. So the federal government has a program out now called Fed Now. 
They're pushing a, a digital currency, not a f- true central bank digital one yet, but I'll get there. The digital currency does function better. It does function faster. The example I always use, and I, I pick on Ethereum a lot, Ethereum to me is going to collapse on its own way. But let's look at money like we look at a train. If you built a train in the 1800s, it's a locomotive, a steam locomotive, and then eventually got better, but it's on two tracks, right? Metal rail tracks. And no matter how big or fast or efficient that engine is, it can only go so fast on those metal tracks. Money works the same way. Money works on rails, just like a railroad. Let's call the two rails. Money works on rails. Debit cards work on a certain rail. Swift Fedwire ACH is a different rail. Credit cards are its own rail. So money functions on rails. If we think of money like a train, no matter how fast that engine gets, that train, that original 1840 two steel tracks will never, ever be able to compete with a maglev train. And what's a maglev? It's magnetic levitation, the super bullet trains in China and some of these other countries. These trains still run on two rails, but that technology is different. They're 220 miles an hour floating on a magnetic thing. Steam locomotive, rail, maglev train, rail. They're both rail, same train, different speed. Digital currency and digital payments do work faster. That's not the issue. So this Fed now premise of let's push you towards getting things better, faster, cheaper. Absolutely. If you look at it, I've done this podcast too, especially with with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency transactions. They say, oh, crypto is slow. Bitcoin, you can never compete with Visa. Visa can do a million transactions a minute or a million transactions a second. I don't remember what it is. It's irrelevant because I'm going to blow it out again. That's fake news. Meant to distract you, meant to say, hey, don't look over here. What do I mean by that? When you swipe your credit card, the Visa MasterCard network does not do a transaction. Depends on how we find a transaction to find it. Again, I'll ask you a simple question. If you're a merchant, Would you rather have your money in 20 minutes or 24 hours? 20 minutes or 24 hours, which one's faster? Invariably, 20 minutes. Crypto digital payments are 20 minutes. People go, well, no, MasterCard transfer, it's a million transactions. No, when you swipe your card, MasterCard and Visa authenticate that transaction. They authenticate and say, hey, you with the card holder, you're good for that money. So if you swipe your card and it's $100, the bank has already validated you. The issuing bank has already said, yeah, you know what? He's good for the money. We'll give you the money, Mr. Merchant, because we, the bank, will collect money from the cardholder. That money moves through what's called an interchange network, a series of rails. Think about your train and your train's going through a series of switches and each switch charges a little bit of money to get through from one rail to another. That's the way the credit card network works. You have an issuing bank. You have a receiving bank, you've got a first data network, you've got different rails, different transfers. They all pull out little fees and everybody makes money. But your $100 transaction, when you swipe that card, shows up on the screen, hey, it's approved. Approve is not a transaction, it's an authentication. The transaction then moves through the switch networks and 24 to 48 hours minus a fee makes it into the business account. That's the function of money on traditional rails. New digital rails, it will be 20 minutes. Now, the, the authentication is a little more complicated. It will eventually get there. But you're you're coming with swipe cards that will be tied to your crypto account, whatever's in there, just like your debit cards tied to your bank account. It's not complicated. You're going to swipe a card. It'll go back, authenticate you have the money there. They'll pull the money out. They'll send the authentication back. They'll keep the money. And then some point later, cash will get deposited in the merchant's account. Most merchants will never accept crypto just like they don't really take credit cards. When you swipe a credit card, they don't accept credit card. They accept cash. The credit card company accepts the risk and deposits cash to the business. Again, I make these distinctions. Do credit cards work? Of course. Do businesses take credit cards? No, not really. They accept credit cards, but they get paid in cash. Crypto will eventually work the same way. Again, you say, all right, Stephen, are you rambling? Where are you going with this? I'm really not. As you look at the function of money, and the way money moves through the network and the rails. We do like getting paid faster. We like to get paid 
you know, cheaper to, to pay our fees as a merchant if we're a seller. Uh, the, the, the concept of protection and the concept of insurance and things like that, all of that's valid, absolutely. The problem with a central bank digital currency is not the function of money or the fast nature of money, it's the programmable nature of money. You put $1,000 in your bank account, again, you get a debit card, the government can't say where you can use that debit card. As long as the merchant accepts it, you can buy a cup of coffee, you can buy ammo for your gun, you can buy a dirty magazine, you can buy uh, alcohol, you can buy cigarettes, you can buy a Bible. You can buy whatever you want with that debit card because it's your money, supposedly, and the merchant's willing to accept it. Fair enough. The bank can't shut your money off. They can't control your purchasing and your spending. They can try and track it, but that's different. Now, programmable money is the issue. If a central bank, haha, central bank digital currency, a central government issued currency is technically what it is. The government issued that currency to you. And instead you had your money and you were paid in $1,000 in the bank, just like your $1,000 debit card. And it was digital money, but all of a sudden it's programmable. Now the government has total control. And I hear lots of guys on the radio and the podcast, they're trying to explain, that. oh, well, you know, the government can track you. The government can tax you. Who cares? That's a part of it. No, they can control your every action. They don't want you buying something. You don't, you don't get to buy it. If they give you, they be in the government. Oh, you get universal health care. Health care for free. Great. Government's going to say you can't have more than two drinks a week. You don't think that's happening? Just came out on the news. Canada's put a, a notice out. The government in the U.S. is looking at trying to limit as guidance, advice, no more than two drinks per week. Now, that's just advice or guidance. If you've got programmable money, the government says, mm, no, you've already had your two drink limit. No more. You can't drink after 8 p.m. You can't have ice cream because you're overweight. You can't buy cigarettes. You can't buy a gun. You can't watch that magazine. You can't go to that website. Oh, here's the best one. You don't take a vaccine. Mm, we'll shut your money off until you do what we want. Total control and compliance for a central bank digital currency. No, it's a central government digital currency. It is a central government digital control. Let's just call it what it is. It's not a currency. It's a complete control mechanism. And the fake news of saying, oh, Fed now, get your money quicker, get it faster. Mm -hmm. That's not it. Here's the problem. For money to go digital, we're already there. Money's already in your account. You put it in, you get your debit card, your debit card's digital money. I make this argument all the time. Bitcoin's digital money, even though I don't think it's currency, it's still digital, but so is your bank account. Your credit card's kind of digital money. You swipe it, money moves around. It's all ones and zeros and in the background, but it's not programmable. That's where the government, in my opinion, wants to be. So how do they get there? Aha. We're 60% there in the US. This is a three-step process. It's very easy. Step one, two, three. I'll tell any one of you, you can argue with me all day long. I don't think it will happen. I hope it won't happen, but it's happening. Step one is super easy. It's coming. Two is already kind of there in Europe. It's already there in the step three, we're done. And by done, I mean, we're in complete governmental control, not conspiracy tinfoil hat. All right, so here we go. How do, you, how do we get to central bank digital currencies, which also correlates over to the question I get lost. Oh, you know, what do you think will happen to Bitcoin? Is Bitcoin going to go up? Will Bitcoin survive? Will it go to zero? And I said, it depends. Bitcoin, I believe, will go up. Bitcoin to me is a fascinating animal for control and not, not control, but control by supply and how it works. I'm not going to go deep into it. As long as you can buy it, I think it'll continue to go up. But what if you can't buy it? Therein lies the problem. People say, oh, well, you know, I'll just, I'll take my money out of the bank and I'll go buy Bitcoin. Really? If you can't take your money out, how are you going to buy Bitcoin or anything else? How do we get to that point? Here we go. Step number one. This is so easy. We're almost there, but I'm going to sell it to you as fake news. Number one. If you are employed by a company, and I'll ask you to raise your hand, we can't say, hey, how many of you get direct deposit? And you should know what direct deposit is. When your, your company just deposits your money in your bank account, so on the 1st or the 15th or whatever your payment are, boom, your money's there, great. Let's think about it, the benefit. No more checks. The 
The check doesn't get lost in the mail. You don't have to wait to go cash a check. You don't have to worry about losing the check. Your money's available right away. It's in the bank. It's insured. You have a debit card. You can spend your debit card. If you lose your debit card, you can replace it. This is better than cash and it's better than checks. So step one, the government, if they choose to, can mandate. Easy to do. Executive order, whoever's in charge. Don't even need to pass a law anymore. Laws are irrelevant. Our government just says, oh, executive order, we'll do what we want. Number one, mandate that all businesses must, must pay by direct deposit. That's simple, but it's a benefit. Remember, money quicker, don't lose your check, it all shows up. So step one in the three-step, how do we lose complete control? Direct deposit. Everything now is direct deposit in your bank. You say, well, that's okay. I can still take it out. I can withdraw cash. I can go spend it where I want. True. But how do they change that? Number two, go to the businesses. This isn't about consumer retail control. It's about business control. If the second mandate that comes down, executive order, law, whatever, says businesses can no longer accept cash. You say, well, Stephen, that won't happen. No, it's already happening during covid there was a lot of things where, oh, let's not take cash because it might have COVID on it. Oh, don't don't touch cash. Oh, no more coins. How many of you have ever been to the restaurant or a store? They say, oh, we don't give change anymore. Oh, there's a shortage of change. Really? All of a sudden, there's a shortage of change. We can we don't have change. We don't have money. See that money's starting to disappear. They're moving towards slowly turning the water up, frog in the boiling water, saying, oh, well, it's all digital. Don't worry about it. it's in your bank. It's protected. It's insured. So at that restaurant, no, you can't pay anymore. You can only pay with a debit card or a credit card. So step one, direct deposit, your money's already there. That's brilliant, fast. Step two, you don't want to carry money around in your pocket. You could lose it. You could get robbed. It, the change takes up space. It's paper. No, it's all digital. So step two, businesses no longer accept cash. And the government will say, hey, this is a good thing for you because if you have cash at home, can't lose it in a fire or can't get stolen. You can't get robbed. If you've got money under your mattress, no, just bring it into the bank. You're protected. It's insured. It's safe. And it's digital. You can spend it wherever you want. So step one, direct deposit. Step two, take away money as access to get paid anywhere. Even if you have cash and pay somebody else, they're not going to take it if they can't spend it anywhere. Be like me giving you stocks or some cash or currency you can't spend. Step three, once all money is in the system as digital, the government will do the switch and convert all of your traditional money on the rails of the 1800 trains to a central bank digital currency or a central government control currency. And the minute it goes digital and controlled, we lose control of everything. And again, you say, oh, well, I don't think that'll happen. Look at Europe. I was with a friend of mine the other day. I had no idea. He does business everywhere. I said, yeah, Europe's already implemented this. Some regions in Europe or countries, I don't want to be politically incorrect, have limited the amount of money you can spend in cash. I think a couple of them are 3,000 euro. One of them might be 1,000. It doesn't matter what the number is. They're already doing it. They're already limiting what you can spend in cash. It's not that much of a leap for that limit to go from 3,000 to 1,500 to 1,000 to 500 to 800 to zero. But it doesn't matter. Fed now, you get your money quicker. Zero's good. Put your money in the bank. It's all there. It's protected. It's controlled. Yeah, the control is all on you. So this is happening. This is going on around us. And I hear people all the time say, oh, well, you know, central bank, did I can't even say it because it's so irritating. Is it going to work? What will happen? I don't know, but it's happening. The government is moving the line in the sand. They are turning up the heat, and we don't have enough people that understand that. Again, I hear radio pundits all the time. Oh, well, it's bad. Why is it bad? Well, it's bad because they can track everything. Yeah, of course. People do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. We all know we have to pay taxes. Telling us, oh, they can track everything and tax you. I'm already getting taxed. Telling me I can't spend my money where I want, that's an issue. Telling me I have to do something or I don't get my own money? Now I'm like, what is this all about? And you don't think it's coming. It's going to be a climate emergency. You have a gas car? No, you can't buy gas anymore. 
Oh, you have a gas stove? No, you can't buy it. Oh, you've got propane? No, you can't buy propane. The control of money is what this is. So a central bank digital currency? Are you kidding me? It's not a bank. Banks don't issue currency. Governments issue currency. That's what we're up against. So that's why I call CBDCs fake news. It's not a lie. It's meant to deceive us. And it's happening. Direct deposit, eliminate cash, convert to a programmable money. It's like moving from the rail of the 1800s to the maglev train. And that bullet train is coming straight at you. All right. This wasn't the most positive podcast, but I needed to get this information out there. I've been tracking this for years. I've been talking about this for 15 to 18 months and people still question me on it. So I thought it was good to have it out for posterity. Again, all right, Steve Amin, the bullseye guy. Check back soon. Thank you.